This video is an introduction and explanation of the Standard 7 spreadsheet that I have created for teachers to use to analyze their data. First, I'm going to go over the purpose of each tab of the spreadsheet and explain to you what they're for. This first tab is the Goals and Analysis tab. On this sheet, you will put in the goals you have for each tier of your students, and it will generate data to show you an analysis of how your students performed at the mid-year, on the final test, as well as telling you what your overall evaluation rating would be. The next tab is the data sheet. This tab is where you type in the names, blocks, and scores for all of your students. The next tab it will show the average or mean scores by tier on the goal, on the pretest, the mid-year, and the post-test for each tier of your students. After that, we have several tabs that say scores by student with a different block. There are eight of these tabs. They show the scores on the pretest, mid-year, and post-test for each student in your class. Next, I'm going to explain what everything is on this data sheet. This first column is for this, the block that your students are in. It's important that these blocks stay in order um, and that you don't leave this column blank. Column B has the tier of the students. The spreadsheet will generate this tier automatically based on the score the student got on the pretest. Third, you have the student's name. You can use first and last or just last name. It's up to you. Next, we have the pretest, mid year, and post test scores. You will type these in um, based on how your students performed in those tests. Next, we have the percentage growth column. This column only exists on the sheet for percentage growth. On the raw score sheet that I sent out, the percent growth is not there. So the percent growth shows how much improvement the student showed between the pretest and the post test. Finally, this goal met column will say whether you've met, exceeded, or not met your goal for that individual student. This is dependent on the tier that they're in. The last column here is for comments. This is if you want to type in any comments that you might have, um, for example, explaining why you changed the tier on a student or putting withdrawn for students that have dropped your class. On the side here, you have instructions for how to use the sheet. Um, there will be detailed video explaining how these directions work in a different video. Next, let's go over what's in the goals and analysis page. This is really a summary or a snapshot for everything that you want to analyze for your class. I'm looking here at the combination sheet just in case I know some people like to use the percent growth, other people like to use raw score, so I made one sheet that combines both. Um, so this first box, you'll put your goals in. Um, the sheet is designed for use for tiered groups. If you're wanting to do the whole class as a one solid group, you could just make your goal all the same for every tier. Um, these red boxes, you will need to type in the goals. So for percentage growth, you would put 25 for 25% improvement, 50 for 50% improvement, and so forth. Um, for raw score, you would just put in the actual score the student would get on the test. The difference between percent growth and raw score is that percent growth is how much improvement you showed. So if the student got a 50 on the first test, and a 75 on the second test, that would be a 50% growth. Half of, or 50% of 50 is 25. So increasing your score by 25 points would be 50% growth. Raw score is for the actual number that the student received on the test. So if you have a test that's 100 points and you got 10 out of 100 or 15 out of 100 or 70 out of 100, and you wanna make your goals based on that number, you would use the raw score sheet. So once you've entered your goals in, it will generate all of the information that's in black. Anything that's in red text is something that you need to update. Anything that's in black is automatically generated by the spreadsheet. So it generates the mean pretest score and standard deviation for the pretest, the mid-year, and the post-test. The mean is the average score among everyone in that group. The standard deviation is how much difference there is between the scores. A higher standard deviation means that your numbers were more spread out. Your students' scores were more different from each other. A low standard deviation means that everybody's score was kind of clustered close together. Everyone kind of got similar scores. This data is used to generate the tiers. So tiers are created by taking the mean pretest score 
adding and subtracting the standard deviation to come up with what the tiers will be. And you can see that in the box down here. So all you have to enter in is the maximum score on your test. So this maximum, this test had 60 questions. This one had 17. I just put those numbers in there. All these other numbers are generated automatically. So it will say, okay, what was the mean? 15 plus or minus six. That's how we get the tier two. Anything below tier two is a tier three. Anything above tier two is a tier one. Um, this will generate automatically. So that's how, that's why we need the standard deviation. This is generating what's called a normal curve or a bell curve for your tiers. Then if you scroll down a little more, it will show you the pre-test, mid-year and post-test scores for all of the tiers of your students. Show you the mean, just so you can get kind of an overview of how they did. The percent growth sheet will show the mean percentage growth at the mid-year and the mean percentage growth at the end. The raw score sheet will not show that because that information is not relevant for that sheet. And finally, at the bottom, we have the rating. This is the rating based on the evaluation criteria that were sent out at the beginning of the school year. Um, a student, a teacher would get an accomplished rating if more than half of her students exceeded the goal, but less than 10% did not meet it. So you have to have a lot of your students do really, really well and not very many not meet the goal. Proficient rating is for more, 80% or more of your students either meeting their goal or exceeding it. A developing rating would be if less than 50% of your students do not meet their goal. An unsatisfactory would be if more than 50% of your students do not meet the goal. So you can see in this sample, this first person has an accomplished rating because we have 90% met or exceeded, more than 80% exceeded, and 10% did not meet, which meets the criteria of less than or equal to 10% not meeting. But this teacher is developing because we had too many people um, not meet their goal uh, and too many people meet or exceeded. So we didn't quite meet the cutoff for proficient. We were at 73% met or exceeded. We needed to be at 80 for uh, proficient. So that's why this person is developing. Channel for how to import student names and scores from Phoenix, as well as videos, a video explaining how specifically to use to get started using this spreadsheet.